Hey, hey monkeys, how are you doing? Damien Keys here. Look what I've got, I've got a new toy. This is a JD Mark King base. Like Mark King was like one of my heroes growing up, but what's brilliant is, check this out. Oh, check it out, it's amazing. Yeah, so um, thank you to, to Howie who I got this off. I actually uh, went to pick it up off him yesterday and uh, I've been playing it a lot. So I can't play it as well as he can, but massive, massive thank you to him. So today I want to talk about getting your music heard and I have top 10 tips and what this video is actually about is about consumption because at the moment what I'm seeing is I'm seeing lots and lots of, of listen to our music, listen to our music, listen to our music and I think there's some clever ways that you can actually get your music heard and you, you can get your music out there and a big part of it is starting to think sort of from, from the back to front which is where do people listen to music and therefore how can we then get your music in front of them? So come with me on today's journey, which is my top 10 ways that you can get your music heard. Tip number one, vlogs and vlogging. Now this whole video is all about where people listen to music and how you can kind of hijack and crowbar into it. Now every single day, people are making vlogs so that other people can listen to vlogs. Now what goes in the background of vlogs? Music. So why not, rather than just making your own vlogs, why not start approaching vloggers and actually asking them if they will feature your music? And again, a big part of this is, is looking after them, is trying to actually find music that will fit a certain vlog. And then actually, rather than just saying, feature our music, which is that classic marketing tool that bands do of just do the shit I tell you to do, why not actually start paying attention to vlogs so that you can actually watch them, so that you can actually have a conversation with a vlogger and say, I'm just a bit of a fan of your channel, I really, really like it and I think some music every so often would fit in with some of your vlogs, like an example from two weeks ago when I was watching that vlog you did, all of a sudden you're playing their game, you're watching their vlogs, you're being a part of their journey, and then it's a bit more of a collab rather than you just saying, do you need some music? Because I can tell you from doing videos, you need music. And especially if you're kind of an underground band and you're a small time vlogger, you need you need unlicensed music. You need music that you can put on there that isn't gonna get taken down or you're not gonna get told off about. So why not go and find some vloggers and actually start paying attention to their material and then saying, would you mind or would you be up for looking into our music and seeing if there's anything that's, that tickles your fancy that maybe they can feature on one of their upcoming vlogs. Number two, the gym. Pumping iron! Now that's right, when we go to the gym, it's a bit boring. We tend to listen to music or we tend to listen to podcasts. We tend to want to have something in our ears to take our mind off the monotony, which is picking stuff up and putting it down and picking it up again and putting it down and picking it up again and putting it down. So why not start to approach some local gyms or some local personal trainers and seeing if any of your music fits into what they do. And again, with all of these ideas we're doing, some of your music will fit into these ideas and some of it won't. And these are ideas that you can actually embellish and actually use your own, your own initiative to kind of find out what works and what doesn't. But when you're at the gym, you listen to music. Why can't you try and get your music featured at the gym? Why not? It's just the, every gym that you go to, pretty much without exception, won't have gym radio they'll be in charge of their own playlist. So why not try and get some of your music featured there? Or if not, approaching some PTs and saying, do you have a, a personal trainer list of songs and is there a way we can get on it? Because again, you're finding the time and the place where someone is listening to music and you're trying to get kind of crowbar your way in. Number three, petrol stations. What? No, I know, a bit of a weird one, but I spend a crazy amount of time on the road, a lot of time, whether it's touring or going to business meetings, I spend a lot of time on the motorway, which means I spend a lot of time in petrol stations. And something that happens regularly is I'll go into a petrol station and I'll just think, what's the music? I don't recognize the music. Out comes my phone, out comes Shazam. A lot of the music then is either stuff I've never heard of, it's 
probably because it's, 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 it's unlicensed, it's not on PRS, and therefore the petrol station will be actually finding music that they can play that just goes along while people are wandering around. But I'm shazamming that stuff, which means other people will be shazamming that stuff. So why can't you start to approach, I've used petrol stations, but it could be any independent store that will actually not have a PRS license or always playing sort of underground music. That is an area where you can get your music heard. And again, it's a, it's a time when people are wandering around, listening to something going, what's this? What is this? The amount, of, I, I use Shazam all of the time. It's an, it's an amazing piece of software. So if your music can be Shazammed, it can be found. If it can be found, then your job is to get it in front of people. Number four, holes music. Yes, I'll hold. <laughs> How many times does this happen every time I phone someone up? I'm put on hold and then I'm listening to some absolutely horrific hold music. Why can't it be your absolutely horrific hold music? No, I'm joking. But why can't it be your music on hold? There are, I know this because I've had many, many companies where I go, oh God, I've got to have some hold music. And so I've got to go and find some music and actually feed it into the system. Why can't you start to find your music places for it to go on hold. It doesn't have to be HSBC Bank, but there are many, many businesses who are cool. Many businesses are growing and have some kind of switchboard that therefore will have some kind of hold system. And that goes for music schools. I know this one. It goes for, for music companies. If there is hold, it needs hold music. It doesn't just want to put you on to, to silence because it'll make you feel like you've been cut off. So it will have hold music. So why not start to approach some really cool companies where your demographic fits in? For example, if you're a kind of a rock or punk band, what about a skate shop if they've got hold music? It might not have it, but they might do. Why not start to approach people so that you're listening on the phone, hold music comes on, your band is playing, and people are going, who's this? This is really good. They're more likely then to say when it pops up, which I have done in the past, what was that music that was just playing? It was really, really good. Oh, that's this band that I know that I play on the hold music. Oh, wicked, I'll go and check them out. Why not? Why can't you do that? Number five, coffee shops independent coffee shops. Now I know I live in Brighton and Brighton is like, is a hub for the independent coffee shop. But one thing I notice when I go into these coffee shops is there's always music playing and it's very, very rarely Radio 1. Because if you think about it, they're rebelling against Starbucks and, and, and Costa Coffee. They want it to be independent. Therefore, they want it to be a, a, a community. They want it to be something different. So it's very unlikely that they're gonna put Radio 1 on. So. They will have music, and just like all of the other stores that we've talked about, someone will be in charge of the music and the playlist so that when you're drinking tea, when you're drinking coffee, it's in the background. And if there's music playing, it's your job to find out who that is so you can get your music in that environment. Bearing in mind, obviously, your music will have to, to fit in with a, a sort of two people communicating while having a coffee. So if you're agoraphobic nosebleed, the death metal band, you probably ain't gonna fit into an independent coffee shop. But if you actually play music that does fit there, that is a great place to get your music featured. Number six, DJ sets. We go out, we're in pubs, we're in clubs, and there are DJs, there are people playing music. Have you tried approaching certain DJs in certain clubs where your music fits in and saying, how would you feel about slotting our new single in? Or how would you feel about putting one of our tracks in and actually talking to DJs? And again, the same as, as we talk about all the time, if you can strike up a relationship with a DJ over a period of time, they are more likely to feature one of your songs and they'll try it out. And not saying, they're not saying they're just gonna start featuring all your songs, but if there's a song that they love that they think will fit into a certain moment of their night, they might play it. And again, DJs all over the country are responsible for playing hours of music every single night. If you can get one of your tracks featured, it's just more, it's just more ears listening to your music. More people with a phone that will just shazam it and go, I don't know this one, and actually shazamming it to see who you are and therefore come with you on your journey. Number seven, radio. Yeah, obviously radio is a place where people will consume music. Do you know how hard it is to get on radio? Yes, I do. But from someone who has been a DJ of a radio station where unsigned bands would send me in music and I'd play it, I know they're out there. And I also know how hard it is to put a show together of three hours a night for four nights a week. 
That's a lot, that's 12 hours worth of music and talking. And so therefore, I had to play a lot of stuff and I had to keep on regenerating all the songs. Every time a new song came out, I'd be losing one. Every time new bands would come to me and say, we've got a new song, I'd be sticking it in a playlist. They are out there. It's just that you have to set your expectation to re real levels, and then you have to put the work in to find them. And when I had the radio show with Ace from Skunk and Ancy, and we, we did this show, we, we played loads and loads of, of bands which weren't signed. And it started off in Brighton on, on the local radio station in Brighton, and then all of a sudden bands from sort of 10 miles away would send it in when they got word of it. After about a year, we were getting stuff sent from India, from Canada, because people were going, I can get my music featured on this show, and they were sending it through. So if you can put the work in, there are radio shows out there, hospital radio for one, college radio for another, um, digital radio, when you go going online, there's plenty of online radio shows that are looking for content for their shows. It takes work, but if you just start, start thinking, well, I have to just get onto radio, I have to get a plugger because a plugger will get me onto radio. Yeah, okay, but now we're talking about real noise and real competition. Why not just start with local radio and even below that, hospital radio and college radio. And let me tell you something else as well. When it comes to doing interviews, on a side note, we used to get loads and loads of these bands to come in and doing interviews. And it was really tough because they didn't have the experience. So Jonathan Ross or, or someone who's like a Jimmy Kimmel style presenter, has got, I mean, they're very, very good at what they do, but they've got a nice, easy job because when you go and interview the killers and you say, oh, you've got a new album and you've been on tour for the last eight months, you've got all of those stories for the last eight months of doing it. When a band's come in that have done three gigs and have got their first EP, they don't have a lot to talk about and they're very inexperienced. And that is a really, really amazing way to cut your teeth, to actually get on radio and actually see what works, what doesn't, and for you to actually Put yourself out there and learn the ropes at a level where you're not gonna be judged too harshly. So yes to radio, but let's set, set our realistic target and actually try and find local college and university and hospital radios that you can potentially get your music onto. Number eight, Sarah's gonna like this, busking. People are wandering the streets all day long and especially if you live in a city, there are buskers. And yes, I know there's licensing issues, and yes, I know there's certain things that you need to, to uphold so you don't get arrested and thrown in prison for the rest of your life. But think about it. People are shopping, they're wandering up and down. I literally just passed some buskers about an hour ago, and they were amazing. And so I stopped for a few minutes. I was like, these guys are really, really good. And then I'm paying attention. And if you had like you know, a sign of what the band is or who you are or buy CDs or whatever you want to do whilst doing it, you have my attention at that point. And this is what this is about. So have you thought about it? Have you actually tried going busking? And I don't mean just go busking for money where you go and play Oasis Wonderwall. I'm talking about going busking to actually promote yourself because while people are walking past, they have no choice but to listen to your music, no matter how good or bad it is. And again, I know it's not gonna fit in if you're in a metal band or if you need a lot of electricity to actually plug in loads of DJ equipment, but as a rule, you are then forcing people as they walk past to listen, stop, potentially pay attention, and then sign up to your social media should that be the thing that you want them to do. Number nine, jingles. Jingles for shows. Now, it doesn't necessarily need to be radio, but that is a big thing. But it could be an online vlogger. It could be, it could be someone doing a YouTube show. It could be radio. I mean, going back to when I was a radio DJ, I used to tell the bands, when you're in the studio, just put together a five to 10 second jingle about my show so I've got something to talk about. Now I know loads and loads of radio DJs will say, we do it all in house, we don't need your jingles. But I can promise you, because I've been there, it is flattering when someone says, I have written you a jingle. And that's what you're doing. You are basically flattering someone and saying, I love what you do, I made you this. It's a little gift. The chances are they're gonna be flattered. If it's good, there's a chance they'll actually say, I wanna feature that on the show. And again, they're gonna put it either into their jingle section, which might get played six to 10 times over a period of a show. They might talk about it. They might point people in the right direction of your band. It's not a tough thing to do to make a jingle of five to 10 seconds to promote someone else and at the same time promote yourself. But it's very, very flattering to receive it. And therefore there's a good chance it will get featured and in the ears of the listeners. And number 10. No. 
And uh, I've forgotten where it was. <laughs> and number 10, playlists. Again, going back to similar thing to the radio. Yes, playlists are obviously something that everybody wants to, to be involved with. The problem is, is everyone goes in straight too high. Everyone just wants to go in at that kind of record label. Oh yeah, we want to get on these massive playlists so millions of people hear our, our songs. Why not start small? Why not go and find people who've got 50 followers or 60 followers and saying, oh, I've just seen your music and I really like all the stuff you've done. I really like your playlist. Can I just point you at one of our songs which may or may not feature, but it's the same sort of style. And they might hear it, A, be flattered, B, think that actually would fit into my playlist, and then slot you in somewhere. Rather than going, well, we wanna get on the EMI playlist, or we wanna get onto this DJ's playlist who's got one million followers. Why not actually be realistic? Or, what about this? What about starting your own playlist? What about talking to other bands in your area and having a local band playlist on Spotify that then people can sign up to, that all of the bands can then start to push on their social media that you're in control of, that you're pushing bands from the local area, like, like your own radio show, where you can feature your own music that other people are gonna start sharing for you. And again, while they're listening to a playlist of stuff, who's gonna crop up? You. Great, that's my top 10 ways that you can get your music heard. But what this actually comes down to is consumption. Music is everywhere. So why not make some of it your music rather than just making music, store it on social media or on Spotify and then demand that people listen to it. Why not actually start looking for where music is just being listened to and actually start to find ways to get your music in there. If you can do that, then your social media doesn't have to be so demanding about marketing that, that of what you need people to do. It can be more about stories. It can be more about your journey and less about demanding that people buy it or listen to it. So thanks guys, if I can get a like, a comment or a share, I don't know about you guys, but I'm really noticing the difference between the Facebook algorithm and, and the Instagram algorithm. It feels like, it feels like Facebook is really smothering content like this. So any comment, like, share, it doesn't have to be a share, it can be a tag, any of that stuff really, really makes a difference and it helps to push the algorithm out there because it does not feel like Facebook is there to help us right now. But more on that in the next few days. I've got some ideas and, and what I think will happen next. But if you can, if you can do me a favor, do the old like, comment, share, tag, etc. If you're on YouTube, subscribing would mean absolutely the world to me. Otherwise, have a good day. Check out more of my content and I'll see you guys tomorrow.